All right, guys, one of the biggest mods in development right now for Total War Shogun 2 is finally released to the public, and it is absolutely something you need to check out next. Total FOTS The Carlist Wars is a mod I've been following for a long time now, and honestly, this could be the closest thing we get to an actual Victorian Total War. It's from modders who created the Scramble for the Far East mod for Shogun 2, which is a brilliant, unique campaign, by the way. Highly recommend you check that out. And it aims to deliver an interesting period of Western European warfare that is ripe for great Total War gameplay. The last time I covered the Carlist Wars, which was roughly six months ago, Izzy had just finished the campaign map, the custom campaign map that he's been building for years, and it is incredibly impressive. It's not out in the public just yet, and what I want to focus on today is a recent release of the mod to the public, which actually enables you to play the battles, either in single player against the AI or online and multiplayer with the fully finished tier one unit rosters and up to 40 units per army as well. So what I want to do today in this video is discuss everything about the Carlist Wars, about what the campaign will be like when it is out, the progress made here on the battle side of things, what you can expect there, and why you need to check it out. Before diving straight in though, if you don't own Shogun 2, its DLCs, or any other Total War for that matter, and after this video you want to go buy one or two of these, you can pick them up for a massive 90% off Instant Gaming, a reputable game key reseller that I'm currently partnered with. They have a great roster of games with the Total War titles and loads of others like Ghosts of Tsushima, Elden Ring, Crusader Kings, or even Manor Lords. You can even pre-order games with a big discount as well. It's a really great key reseller. All of these games and more all have much bigger discounts than ever before, so if you're thinking about buying, make sure to click the links in the video description to get big, big discounts on your games and support my channel at the same time. Now let's get back to the video. So a little background to this first, the mod is set during the Carlist Wars, as the name suggests, which were a series of Spanish civil wars essentially during the 19th century that were fought between two rival political factions, the rebellious Carlists and the royalist Cristinos supporting the Spanish Queen. We've got other nations on the map here as well, Portugal, which funny enough is also going through a bit of a civil war, France and the United Kingdom, and the total area of the map, and just keep in mind this is still pre-alpha, goes from North North Africa up to southern France and goes as far east as Corsica and Sardinia with little bits of northern Italy here as well. Not all of it has been filled out, of course. The focus is the Carlist Wars, so the primary priority has been to polish up France, Spain, and Portugal. But while there's still lots of work to be done here, the progress Izzy has made for what's already here is just absolutely immense for a custom campaign map mod. You can also see in the campaign main menu there will be a number of playable factions when it's all out and released, and as it stands right now, all their unit rosters from a tier 1 perspective are complete. The campaign map as it stands right now has all of Iberia and southern France filled out with realistic terrain details, trade routes, cities, upgradable towns, rivers, snow-covered Pyrenees to the Alps. We've got fantastic mountains dotted around the map. The water detail with the sun glinting off the waves, the various slight differences in elevation and terrain, the patches of forest and arid dry land. Each city model, for example, is upgradable. Level 1 strongholds differ from from level 2 forts that differ from level 3 fortresses, giving your settlement upgrade investments a really nice visual effect as well, which is just commendable work here. We've got these dynamic looking building cards as well, which I just love, and obviously there's this dynamic town system with farms, industrial estates, etc., some of which have their own unique models as well, which looks superb. There's been a ton of work to make sure seasonal changes make an impact on the landscape as well, green in spring to a more more dry summer to the more vanilla feel of winter, everything on the map, all the details will look a bit different, and with things like custom seasonal uniforms in the troops and armies as well, this system will have lots of impact on other mechanics as well, which is really amazing to see. 
Everything here though at the moment is still a work in progress. This is just kind of a recap of what the campaign map looks like, how the mechanics are at the moment, building trees that are good with great looking UI but still lots of balancing to be done, food supplies and fishing wharfs and docks and food production in your port buildings. All of these things still need to be really balanced across the board for your economy, your recruitment systems, all of that jazz. But there's also a really nice dynamic resource system that feeds into your buildings like timber, which will be important for your early game lower tier buildings and stone for your higher tier buildings, as well as other resources that are a bit more scarce and in some cases may force you to do some international trade with other nations on the map and proper intercontinental trade, which will give you things like cotton, spices or tobacco. So lots of interesting design kind of thoughts and implementations that are going to be going into the campaign as well. And in time, of course, this will all come with more battle maps as well, both for the land and sea battles. Custom siege maps will apparently, it's in the plans, to be launched with the first version of the public release, which is a massive undertaking. Such a positive step for a mod of the scale. I mean, usually you get mods like this that don't touch siege maps at all for years, but the fact that that is a big focus is a really, really positive step. We're also going to be getting, of course, more interesting and detailed technology trees that doesn't just kind of let you get buffs and bonuses, but actually modernizes technology as you progress in your campaign and with everything else as well. Scripted events for more rebellions, unique events and more. I mean, there is so much content planned that I cannot wait to see for this mod that Izzy has planned and it's, it's going to be amazing when it's released. For such a modern period of history being set in the 1800s up to the early 1900s as well, this is going to be basically the fall of the samurai of European warfare, a proper Victorian total war in a more modern game, which is just so exciting to explore. It's also worth noting that the campaign will be playable in multiplayer as well, which is just fantastic. So essentially, lots of really, really positive stuff on the campaign side, but what I really want to talk about in this video is the battles. And the unit rosters that Izzy has been working on tirelessly to get done. So with quality custom uniforms, textures, models, weaponry, the whole works, it's all complete for tier one units. In terms of how this will affect the campaign, of course, and recruitment, you'll get global and local caps to have access to all of these units in regional kind of capacities, but also international uh, global recruitments as well. You'll have an in-depth population system to recruit from, so that's going to be really interesting to engage with. And everything here is trying to reflect that eventual mechanic on the campaign as well. You can see there is a variation of seasonal uniforms, so winter uniforms will incur more fatigue as it's bulky and wearing the wrong kind of uniform will give you different types of attrition penalties, which I think is a brilliant innovative system for recruitment and army kind of maintenance. And you can see how different these uniforms look. I mean, units in the scramble for the Far East looked amazing. They proved themselves there and it looks like work here on the Carlist Wars is going to go above and beyond that by a large margin. So very promising work is being done to flesh out these unit rosters. Tier one is complete, hopefully higher tier are going to be done in the future as well. And that's not all. I mean, there are loads of new features that have been added into the battle side of things to the mod as well. We've got new animations for gun crews, higher chance of misfiring for early lower tier units, which is great for a balanced perspective, 400 individual soldiers per regiment, 40 units per army, which means, you know, multiplayer battles are just going to be absolutely amazing, a spectacle to watch, uh, very befitting the time period, of course, as well. And I mean, uh, there's a lot more to come as well. This is early days in the battle side of things. All these tier one units are complete, but we're going to get higher tier units, more balancing to be done as well as players play. Uh, feedback is given to Izzy from the community uh, and changes are made, patches are made, etc. So lots of really great things to be done here. And all these factions on the main menu, as you can see here, are done uh, from a multiplayer kind of perspective as well. So you can actually go in there and play with all of these unit rosters in multiplayer or indeed against the AI as well. The current piece of work now 
that the tier one units are done is focused on balancing recruitment costs, you know, how fatigue works, morale, uh, the speed and pacing of the battles as well. Lots of visual and sound effect overhauls and additions. The balance of artillery versus proper battalions of infantry versus how cavalry is used as well with lower fatigue values. It's all super important to kind of figure all of this and, uh, and get to a really balanced state for the mod, which is what is being currently done. But as it stands, it's really, really great fun to play. It really does make you feel like you're, you're playing a proper Victorian Total War. Overall, the battle side of Carlist Wars is here and ready to play for the public, and they are amazing. I really do recommend it. The pacing feels great. The 40 unit per army implementation means you can play some massive battles that feel epic in scale and lend some far bigger strategic gameplay for the mod than others like it. The units themselves look polished and historically authentic from an animation and visual effects perspective. It's a breath of fresh air, especially compared to other mods for Empire. Napoleon or Fall of the Samurai, it really blows it all out of the park for me, especially in visual quality. The next step in development is to get a basic campaign map up and running and publicly released, hopefully sometime this year, and things are getting there, especially as I said earlier in the video with a lot of base systems ready to go, the terrain, the visuals all pretty much done as well for Iberia, Southern France, with the unit rosters for tier 1 units complete as well, that's a big chunk of work done. Uh, so Izzy can now focus on tying it all together with a fully playable and fun campaign experience. And that's it for today, guys. Carlist Wars is deep in development with huge progress being made on the campaign. Hopefully, we get to see more soon. And when we do, I'll be making more videos right here on the channel. Uh, but in the meantime, I've dropped a link to Izzy's YouTube channel for his dev diaries, especially the Steam page so you can download the mod and start playing the battles yourself and to the official Discord server where you can find other players to play multiplayer with and find out more about the mod and its latest updates. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about the Carlist Wars and everything you've seen here today, so do let me know in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel for more Total War content just like this. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.